Kerner and Quinley. Hey, Kerner, Matt Quinley, could you guys come forward, please? Um, and Chef. Okay. 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 So what's going to happen is there's going to be all this clapping now, Cervantes. No, 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 in this. Back in uh, 2019, um, the members of the Champaign County Street, Street Crimes Task Force were contacted by uh, what I like to call the East Chicago PD, BCPD. Does anyone be Champaign yet? No? Okay. Well, the Chicago PD, um, BCPD, uh, in regards to a homicide suspect that was um, linked to the Champaign Urbana area. I'm going to read this sentence from the nomination form. The suspect had killed a mother shielding her baby during a drive-by shooting. So, this is um, it's a very serious situation. Um, Jim Kerner here had a pending investigation on one of the suspects. Um, he had obtained a search warrant for this in uh, Urbana. Uh, and these suspects ultimately arrived at the, at the residence in Urbana. And these two gentlemen, along with others from the Street Crimes Task Force, were uh, very instrumental in making sure that they, they could um, capture the suspect. And truthfully, what I find interesting is um, they were able to facilitate this with a giant team of guys um, and gals from, from this unit. So gentlemen, I just want to say quickly thank you and present you with your commendation for us. There it is. Now you can clap, Mike.
so what I have in my hand is a uh, robbery report. Um, Burgess King. Here's a summary that the officer wrote on the face sheet. Arrestee entered the business and attempted to purchase food. When the employee opened the register, arrestee attempted to remove currency from the register. Employees and a patron in the store held arrestee in place until police arrived. So I, I, I don't know all of his which sure you are Robert. Okay, so you actually uh, were a citizen just there having breakfast. And what did you hear? I heard a bunch of motion calls to police and stuff, so I signed up to help. Okay. And you're? I'm um, um, and I was the guy that took the guy down. So you, okay, so yeah, I read that. It's very well, it's, it's fun to actually meet the people. You read it, it's, it's very generic and vanilla when the officers write some of these things over and over and over again. But I'd like to thank citizens like you guys who actually were in there and Hips Mel and doing this. And I think Sergeant Coker, you were running the team that day um, that, that helped out to actually actually make that arrest. So um, I will now try to find my certificate, and I appreciate you guys so much for, for, for doing this. So let's see, Matthew Lindsay is on top here. Sir, thank you, congratulations. That's good. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Investigator Quinley and Investigator Kerner. I had to uh, pause for a second because we have people getting like multiples of things now. Um, so I just wanted to uh, make sure I got this right. But you get so much you know, blame, I guess, there, boy. Um, part of what these guys do, um, and, and Paige, part of what these officers do, um, can be rather difficult at times. Um, this, th this event is a call that took place at a hotel uh, where a father overdosed and died. Um, uh, using heroin. In the room was the, the mother and the two-year-old. And the officers came out. They ultimately, uh, with the help of Paige Bennett, were able to care for the toddler, initiate the investigation, and then go and find um, a, a, the right guys, the detectives and the street crimes task force people to help continue the investigation. Um, uh, Officer Bennett with uh, the, the detective department. Investigator Quincy and Investigator Kerner were able to confirm and ID the offenders who were selling the heroin. A matter of fact, Champagne had a very similar incident involving a death just uh, a day or two after the Urbana incident. Ultimately, these gentlemen were able to work the case, make an arrest, and the offender pled guilty for six years um, in prison. So while uh, it, it, is a, it's a, it's, it is a very sad event, I want to recognize these guys for the work that they had done um, in, in trying to help, I guess, bring some sort of resolution to this event. So let me um, give them their rib. You get it.
Sergeant Curley, Officer Wright, Officer Gale, and Officer Wright again from U of I P. Or Sergeant Wright, I should say. I guess we're trying to notice this in the documents we drafted here. Um, one of the things that we train for, you guys will hear a lot about, is that you hear about active shooters. You hear about events where people have had um, somebody enters a gun and goes and does this in a school or does this in a, in a place of business. Um, this uh, this event hurt, occurred uh, at Clark Lindsay here in Urbana. There were no shots fired. Saw a couple of heads tilt, wondering why they hadn't heard of this. Fortunately, there were no shots fired. However, the dispatch and the report went like this: Metcad, that's our 911 center advises a male was walking into the building with a gun. There's an armed subject in the nursing home. Now, they, I, I love my brothers, my firefighter friends, I'll make some more fun of them later at the end, but they don't call the firefighters when these kinds of things happen. They call these guys. Um, and U of I came over to help us. And ultimately, <coughs> they worked their way through the building. They, work their way, and, and, and staff is pointing and directing the officers as they go down through the, through the building, and ultimately, they confront the offender. And they do it so effectively that he immediately surrendered. He was arrested, but it, it's, it's almost comical to when they write, he was arrested without incident, was found in possession of a 38 caliber revolver. Um, but, due to their quick thinking and network, that point that, that day, indeed, there was no incident. They were able to actually calmly, coolly address the problem. We actually use this particular event. Um, we, we've discussed it in some of our training. So many times, officers will end up, um, it's, you watch a video that occurred in Philadelphia, or we hear about an event at Chicago Police Day. They actually have one of these in your own town, and they have um, put together the, the principles and things that we on, um, it, it, it was nice to see it actually come to fruition, and nobody got hurt. So now I have to figure out who gets which award here. Um, let's see, from us. <coughs> and a commendation for
Dr. John Brown, or Officer Williams from U of I, or Alvin, please come forward. He, he went up 10 on one side, and then when he got towards the top of the tent on the other side, we realized it was the tent on the other side. They're not connected, so he went back down and back up to the other side. So he ran about 20 flights of stairs. So the um, Boost Mobile store at 500 North Cunningham is robbed. These officers and a couple of those who are not here today respond, set up a perimeter, begin to do the things that police do. Uh, they get out on foot. They actually locate a subject at nearby um, uh, trailer park. And inside the laundry room, they find a subject. Clothing description though was different. So they release him, they continue on their way. Um, I'm then trying to see if you can follow this. Officer Jeffers then noticed bikes in the driveway of one unit that were not normally there. He made contact with them and they, the folks inside, denied owning or knowing anything about the bikes. They then located at that same area the clothing <coughs> that the robber had shed. Um, and so they went back out to the other officers. They found that initial subject, conducted some more investigations, actually got a consent to search, 
And lo and behold, they found his shoes and a giant pile of United States currency on that subject when they made an arrest. Later that, they compared that with some surveillance video, and indeed, um, they were able to solve this particular robbery. Um, what I liked was written here on uh, the, uh, the nomination form. What was worth note, and in my opinion, worthy of the board, was the fact that not only did they get out and walk to the trailer park, but their observations, communication, and willingness to ask for consent and do some general solid police work led to a successful outcome. So, I present you guys your certificates here. I had to take a moment to go back and see if I could find the other one that she wasn't here for. positive 
to hear. Upon my arrival, I parked in the south parking lot, and I could hear her screaming. I entered the building and followed the sounds of screaming and saw the female laying on the ground just outside of the door. Um, but his, I, I was able to hear gurgling sound from the, from the, from the girl. Um, and as soon as she began crying, I kept a hold of her and was able to uh, talk to the mother and provide her the, uh, get, put her in the a recovery position. Kind of technical, but he saved this young lady's life. Um, and for your quick thinking uh, and your action, I would like to present you with the Urbana Police Department's Life Division. She was already volunteering for Champagne Police, as well as at an equestrian therapy center, while in there four days a week. She insisted that she still had the time and energy to help. And the supervisor sure noticed this and wanted to recommend her for award, and I agree. And thank you so much. Um, as, as the mayor and I speak about quite often, we spend a lot of time and energy in public safety helping those that are in a mental health crisis. And this is no, no different here with Pastor, uh, Pastor Jones. Um, there's a subject standing in the middle of the road. And just so that we know, it's at the, it's the 1800 block of Cunningham at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So there's all kinds of traffic, all sorts of activity. Um, the officers arrived and they're having some issues trying to get the subject out of the roadway, but the subject asks, uh, they were having delusions, um, and it should be in a, uh, here it is, Pastor Jones was contacted and asked if he would come to the scene while the other officers blocked off the street. Um, that's an example of community policing. That's an example of somebody caring enough to say, yes, I will get up, and I will go, and I will reach out, and I will help. As a matter of fact, if I remember this right, then later the reports, you have to begin to start to drive to the hospital. So for your efforts and your willingness to participate, I just like to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, 
an event where a, a young lady was going to be recognized for helping with a, 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 an older person, a 70 year old person with dementia. Um, very, very similar event here. According to this actual synopsis, the officers were dispatched to a medical for a missing person's call. Somebody just wandered away from the facility. Um, and, and we actually were able to put out, I'm not a big social media person, I don't do any social media, but we put it out on social media, there had been some press work done, and our was instrumental in seeing what had happened, and picking up the phone, and making the call so that we could come out and reunite this citizen and get them back to the medical facility, and unite them with their family as well. And so for that, Mr. Carter, I'd like to say thank you, because thank you, Mr. President, for today. Thank you so much. Um, another event involved a mental health issue. Um, and, and, and one of the things that I like to say is that sometimes it seems very easy to say, well, this is a mental health thing. But a lot of calls don't present as a mental health event. This actual event was, uh, actually came in as a domestic uh, disturbance. And it was only after they got there that the officers have sorted through this and realized, indeed, it was, it was, more, than, it was more than just a domestic sort of dispute. There was, there was actually this uh, mental health component to this. Um, one of the things that I liked about this is one of the officers was able to, so they, they realized that this person is in crisis. As a matter of fact, there had been fluid and cleaning fluid and uh, shampoo or something spilled all over the floor. We needed to try and figure out how to safely get this person into custody. And so, indeed, they used a blanket and they ultimately made a plan. And when they went to go hands on, ultimately, she was, uh, it, here's what it says, the victim complied and only offered verbal re uh, resistance. And we can take verbal resistance, um, but because of their work, because of their patience, because they uh, were able to at the time be their uh, friend on this event, uh, they were able to take this person into custody without incident. And this was the line that I liked. Her mother, so the person in crisis, her mother was there, her mother praised the police response and thanked us for being the other half. So, Amy, thank you. Now I've got to figure out some problems with this. Officer Brown. Um, also, D. Decker, I know that we had, I think there was a law enforcement official in the month that we were on our tour a while back. Um, but this is an official awarding of his actual physical award. Um, and I'll just read this from Officer D. Decker's report. Uh, let's see. I was dispatched to 2406, blah, 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 to assist Urbana Fire Department with a baby that was just born and not breathing. When I arrived on scene, I located the mother in the bathroom tub with her newborn baby son. The son was not breathing. 
So while the mother continued to hold him, I began CPR until medical personnel arrived on scene. And then as I went in that this is about blah, 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 blah. It just then immediately goes back into this is what we do. And I don't want us to always take this, it's just, I think we need to stop sometimes and recognize some of the very, very uh, cool work that these um, men and women do here. So, um, yeah, I actually got reached out by the, uh, uh, the family of these folks later. Nicole Dowling and James Dowling, and or Anita Merrick. Uh, I'll just very, very briefly mention this one because I thought again this one was special. We've, we've dealt with our seasoned citizens who walked away. Oh, this is a three-year-old found in the middle of the road on Route 130. And instead of driving by, hoping somebody will do something, these people jumped out and did something. And um, I just, I think that's it. This could have had a much, uh, very terrible outcome, but not because of the work. That, uh, just taking a few minutes to step maybe out of their comfort zone and do something. And I, I think it's over. So I don't think this, this break show up. <laughs> is he here? No. Okay. Uh, Diego, I think, is here. And Bradley McCormick. So Matt Quinley was recognized as officer of the year in 2019. Um, and so he and I got to go to a, a little luncheon together and whatnot. But today I wanted to picture recognize him in front, of, in front of all of you. Matt came from the McLean County Sheriff's Office 20 plus years ago and um, has been an 
an absolute stalwart in working on what ultimately became his, I guess, finding his niche, which is indeed working in the world of the Street Crimes Task Force, working on very surgically uh, gun cases and drug cases. As a matter of fact, in 2003, that's what it was, we, we, we were the, uh, Matt and I were one of the founding members of Urbana Street Crimes Unit way, way, way back when. Um, Matt's always calm. He's always cool and collected. Uh, I don't see Matt get, um, get, get worked up. And those sort of, that, that sort of ability, that attitude has helped serve him in this capacity. It served him as he worked in general investigations. And it's given him the, set, the ability to work with young people. And I mean that I'm talking about new officers and help teach and help guide. Um, as a matter of fact, in, 27, in 2019, he was, he was responsible for initiating 27 different cases, or excuse me, 27 different arrests resulting from the cases that he had uh, started regarding um, drugs and weapons. So, um, Matt, I, I thought this was interesting, and again, during the nomination, somebody had, had written this. Throughout the year, Investigator Quinley was available 24 hours a day to answer questions and provide guidance. Always took personal time to help others better themselves and their investigation skills. So, Matt, uh, although it's it's a little early, just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. at our front desk and he has, has been um, being awarded the Civilian uh, Employee of the Year for 2020. Um, I, I thought this was, uh, as everybody knows, COVID's been a problem in, in all sorts of you know, service delivery areas and especially at public safety areas. And one of the areas that can be really tricky as the employee pool shrinks, the room for error shrinks. Um, as our patrol officers, we had it, we ultimately had a whole uh, day shift team of officers go down to quarantine and other things, and we had to have detectives step in for a few days to, to actually work the streets and, and, and those kinds of things happen. And Rad absolutely um, was a, a, a big piece of our front desk staying up and running throughout all of 2020. The nomination form says he is reliable flexible, has taken on many duties and training responsibilities. Um, because of Rad's efforts, there was not a disaster at the front desk. I wanted to also note, when I, when I, as I was thinking about Rad and, and his work there, um, always, always, always calm as well. Um, competent, solid as an employee, um, and he does take on extra work. Sometimes it's not even just here, he uses a vacation time to help on the family farm. So um, I, I was, you know, the way you have the ability to, to rearrange your schedule, the work that you've done, um, I'm absolutely taken to death. So thanks, man. And I will present you with this class. It's my employee of the year.
As a matter of fact, I think some of the words that were used in all the pages of people that nominated you here, dude, talk about kind, thoughtful, caring, and hardworking. Um, Joe, Joe can dance with kids on Facebook videos, mediate a neighborhood dispute, or again, respond to a man with a gun call. Um, and to be able to have a skill set that you can do all of those things and do them well um, is, is, is it's, it's a nice find to have. I want to read one sentence from one of these, or one paragraph here from one of the nomination forms. The Urbana Police Department is a better place and a better organization because Joe is here. I am thankful for his work and his service. I am proud to be part of an organization that has people like Joe. We are all better for it. Joe? Like, no, it's private property, you know what I mean? You won't find anything crazy in there, right?